wonder if you've ever tried to hack a big root system out of the ground. Man, I think it's one of the most intense activities I've ever done, trying to shift a deep root system out of the ground. Talk about the need for patience, long suffering, perseverance, let alone physical endurance. If you're like me, it takes spades and forks, hatchets, saws, trowels, branch cutters, anything I can get my hands on to get the job done. And it doesn't have to be a big tree or plant to put up a fight. Something well-rooted doesn't shift easily, even under the greatest strain. In fact, sometimes it just won't budge at all. I'm always impressed when I see a tree or a bush growing in the most unlikely of places. You know, clinging to the face of a cliff or a building or fixed in some other sketchy position or location where there's little or no soil for it. Because of course it's not just big trees. Plant roots can be just as impressive. Just take the humble dandelion as an example. They're so easy to remove at the surface, but if you don't deal with the roots properly, they come back over and over and over again and again and again. That's why weed killers try to weaken or kill off the roots. Otherwise, they're just going to hang in there, even under the most difficult of circumstances, all because of being well rooted. Bible uses the imagery of roots for all sorts of things, but here I just want to check out one passage. It reads, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. It's the letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So then, rooted and built up in Jesus, what's that all about? Well, first, let's remind ourselves what roots are for. So a plant or tree reaches its roots into its surroundings in order to secure its position and draw life from its environment, yeah? So for a plant or a tree, growth, fruitfulness and resilience all depend on being rooted well into the right place. Now, let's take that imagery and apply it to our lives. So the idea of the imagery is that somehow my own growth, fruitfulness and resilience is determined by what I'm figuratively rooted into. Or you might say, my physical, emotional and spiritual health is determined by the type of lifestyle I'm rooted into, the way I think and the way I respond to the world around me. So physically, this idea is pretty easy to get hold of. A healthy physical body is the result of being well rooted into a good lifestyle of diet and exercise and of course avoiding things that would harm my physical health. But what about my emotional and spiritual health? Well this is a bit trickier to work out. What, am I, what I'm rooted into that feeds my emotional and spiritual life is not so obvious as it is the physical side. Yet it is every bit as important. Let's look at our passage to help us out here. Rooted and built up in Christ. So what does it mean? Well, through faith in Jesus, we are, in some real but mysterious way, united with him drawing from him and sort of clinging on to him like roots. So crucial is this reality that the New Testament talks about it frequently. For example, the Bible says, whoever is united with the Lord is one in spirit with him. In fact, this mysterious unity with Jesus is so important that Jesus prays for it not many hours before he's crucified. He prays, Father, I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them 
and that I myself may be in them. That's from John chapter um, 17. Now, this may all sound weird, abstract, even absurd. The idea of Jesus, the Son of God, somehow actually and meaningfully being present inside of me. Or you might accept all this language at some level, but then pass it off as colourful spiritual lingo with no real practical meaning for daily life. And of course, that's where for many of us the problem lies. The basic difficulty in relating what we can't see to what we can. How can I think about living a life rooted and built up in Jesus? Or as the Bible puts it, how do I live by faith and not by sight? The truth is, in a way, normal human life is lived by faith and not by sight in so many areas. So let me explain. Here's an illustration. On a physical level, I've been taught about the internal parts of my physical body, but I don't necessarily see them or feel them or fully understand how they all function. As I sit here, I can't necessarily see or feel my liver or my kidneys or my spleen, my small intestine, large intestine, or my heart or my brain. I can't actually feel the blood flowing or the oxygen being transferred or the nutrients being extracted from my food. <laughs> you get the general idea. True, if things go wrong, pain will make known these things in my body and where they are. I'll become physically aware of them. But then I take action and I adjust my lifestyle in order to re-establish and restore health. And there's my point. Living a life in a way that takes into consideration important things I can't see or feel. So, I've been told by the Word of God that there is a spiritual reality that I can't see or feel, but my well-being depends on living a life that takes this into consideration. Rooted and built up in Jesus means living each day in a way that corresponds to Jesus' presence in me, even if unseen or unfelt. The fruit of this progressively cultivates a life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. A life secure regardless of the circumstances that come my way. Rest for my soul and life in all of its fullness. So, when external circumstances threaten my physical or emotional or spiritual well-being, I respond through faith in Jesus, who he is and what he's done by trusting his teaching. I practice it. Loving, blessing, forgiving, encouraging, giving, praying, worshipping. You get the general idea. That's why our passage has this sort of progress and flow within it. First receiving Christ, putting faith and trust in him, then continuing to develop and grow in this. Rooted, built up, strengthened with the result of overflowing with thankfulness. What an amazing thing this is! So the question is, have you and I received Jesus as Lord? That is, put him in charge of our lives willingly. And is this flow and progress of being rooted in Jesus evident in our lives? My daily life will reveal where I've got my roots sunk, from where I'm trying to draw nourishment and security, what I'm really clinging on to. And if it doesn't produce the life Jesus has for me, then I've sunk my roots somewhere other than in him. But all I need to do is transfer my trust and hope away from the wrong source and put it in him. How? To receive him intentionally and completely, turning away from the life that denies what he teaches. You can't incorporate Jesus into your lifestyle. You can't supplement your normal patterns of daily living with him and hope to be free. It's all his way for the life he offers. Then spend the time listening to his voice in scripture, 
to developing your relationship with him by faith, through prayer, through worship. Live life according to the unseen, by faith rather than by sight. So, I pray that you may be rooted and built up in Christ, that you may be strengthened in faith and overflowing with thankfulness, that you may establish an awareness of his living presence within you. May your roots in Christ bring nourishment and security. Whatever storm or drought may rage on the outside, may you live a life in Jesus that is in every way firmly rooted. Thank you.